Hello, and welcome back to the stream. So, today is a thing, not a game. I was going to say a game, but it's not a game at all, in fact. This is a stream I've been meaning to do for a while now, for a couple reasons. First, I always wanted to learn how to make a game, and I play plenty of games, so I figure, you know, let's put the shoe on the other foot. Let's see how hard it is to actually make one. The answer is quite, but in the actual process, you know, right? And second, I just, it's been on my schedule to do this for a long time, like my personal schedule, and I just never got the time to do it for whatever reason. So, figure, you know what, Saturday is currently open, so why not, uh, why not give that a little bit of a shot, see how I do. So, let me just uh, load up Game Maker Studio here. So I said this on Twitter, but I am going to be using Game Maker Studio to make this game. For two main reasons. The first reason is I am a very amateur programmer. I'm not very good at programming at all. So, all right. Anything that makes it much easier for me to actually do the programming, which GameMaker has the drag and drop system. Perfect. Excellent. Big help. Uh, second, I have on call, not actually on call, and not actually now, but I have a game maker expert I can ask questions to if something comes up that is confusing me. So I've got to, where is this? There it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, forgot to log into Steam earlier. Alright, so Game Maker Studio is spinning up. So, uh, I have done the tutorial for this before. A long time ago. I forgot to save my project. That was a mistake. Drag and drop. And the game we're going to be calling Block Ball. I already have. Okay, in that case, we're going to open up. Close. Oh, I see. It was forcing me to do that for some reason. I don't know why. All right, well, here we are. So here we are. We got the Game Maker window. It's captured from my desktop, nothing too crazy. And also because this is going to be a silent stream. I've got a uh, royalty-free music thing going on here in the background. So this is being played from Stream Beats is the website www.streambeats.com copyright free music for Twitch streamers and YouTubers. Uh, I don't know why that stopped just now. Why that stopped? I don't know why that... Wait, is this... Oh, wait a second. Do I have to download this? Do I actually have to buy this or can I listen to it on Spotify or something? Yeah, let me see. Let's go to Spotify. That works. All right, so this is the Stream Beats Trip Tune album, which is what I'm going to be using. I don't really use Spotify though. Is there a way to turn down the sound on this? There we go. That'll work. How many things is in this? 51 songs? Wow, okay. Anyway, yeah. So all these songs are going to be going from the Stream Beats Chiptune album on Spotify. Alrighty. So, like I said, we're making a game today, or I'm going to try and make a game. And shit, I forgot to move my files over. 
Uh, should be fine. This thing, this stream's gonna take up that much space. All right, so we're gonna do a couple things first. We're gonna create object, and we're gonna call this. I need three things because what I'm basically making is a pong clone. Because simplest video game I can think of, and once I have that sort of set, I can do stuff with it, right? So we're gonna make this the wall object. Uh, new sprite. And we're just going to... I wanna do like SPR. Actually, I should have renamed that, hold on. This one shouldn't be wall, it should be object wall. And then make a new sprite for this. The sprite is going to be called Sprite Wall. And Edit Image. Alright. So this is going to be a very simple thing. I'm sure... Oh, right. I was doing this, wasn't I? Delete that one. So, Sprite Wall. We're just going to make a little thing here. There you go. There's my wall sprite. That's it. That's all I needed. I literally just need a one thin line of it to work. Uh, maybe make it too thin, just so it's a little clearer to see. Also, I'm going to save the project. Okay, there we go. Um, so... Collision mask. Rectangular. Yep, that's correct. I'm wondering if I should make this bigger. Probably should make it bigger. Where's the paint bucket? Is there a paint bucket? There it is. There we go. There you go. We got a wall sprite now active. Alright. So there's my sprite wall. 64 by 64 pixels of pure ball blocking. Visible. Yes, yeah, solid, I guess, is what I want. Add event. So, on creation. Uh, do I do anything on creation? Probably not, really. It just has to exist. Yeah. Yeah, um, wait. Actually, no, there is something I want to do on creation. So, let me create a room real quick. This is, uh... Let's call it room, uh, game. this one to walls. There we go. So look at this. Got a walls. Is there a way to click and drag? Yes. There we go. So we've got our wall instances now covering... Why is this off slightly? Can I change the room size to not quite have that? You know what, let's go with this. 220. Why was that side? That's weird. Okay, so it's now, let's make it a two wide just so it's bigger. All right, there we go. Our room is now set up with the walls. Now, what I want to do here is there's a specific... Because what you have to do normally, right, is you have the wall come in, and when the wall is existing, if the ball hits it... Sprites. 
There we go. So, when the room exists, the walls are going to bounce the ball back down, right? Like, they'll basically... If the ball comes in here, goes up like this, it'll invert the y-axis and bounce it off in this direction, and so on and so forth. Like, on this one, it'll invert the y-axis for the velocity of the ball as well. So... I got two ways to do that, right? I can either... No, actually, you kind of think of it. I don't need to do anything. Because what I can do instead is first, let's create a new object. We're going to call this... Uh, ball. Of ball. I'm going to make a new sprite for this one. Which is spur ball. The image. I'm going to paint bucket this one to be white as well. But... Instead, we're going to also have a... a black outline here. Oops. A little easier to see. Is there a line tool? There is. There we go. So, Sprite Ball is now existing. Collision Mask. Automatic Rectangular. Good. Alright, so, uh, an event. When it creates, we are going to do... Let's see, two things. First, we are going to. Let's see, I want to create. Hmm. I want to give it velocity. Common variable. I guess assign a variable. Variable. Let's call it var speed value relative. One. I guess it really depends. So Actually no, you know that no that no, wait. Okay, so I actually want to set two variables. Hold on a second. Uh, I'm trying to think here. So, create the instance. Create another instance. Set so long countdown. And set instance variable. Variable speed. There you go. Horizontal and vertical speed. So horizontal and vertical speed are now going to be randomized. So horizontal speed Okay, so what I'm thinking about what I want to do here is I want to have the horizontal speed either be negative one or positive one to move in one of the two directions and then vertical speed is going to be zero to some amount. Like zero to one probably, so it'll either, it'll move, or it'll be negative one to one. So it'll be moving anywhere in like a 90 degree angle in the left direction. So you have a little bit of a thing, but I gotta set it randomly. So value, how do I set it randomly? I guess what I would have to do is probably create... I'd probably create a randomized value. It's a global variable. 
that sprite. Man, this, one, this, this playlist is a bop. This is Square Coffee. Copyright for the music for your live streams, YouTube videos, and LAN parties. Actually, you know what this kind of sounds like? This sounds like a jazz, like a version of a uh, bubblegum pop. Like the do 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 do. Like it sounds like it's kind of working off that theme. Okay, let's assign a variable here, and we're gonna call this one. Uh, Rand. We're going to set another one too. Call it uh, Y Rand. So what I'm going to do there is I'm go okay. So the reason I'm doing this is because I want the initial randomization to be separate from any randomizations that occur later on in collision. Because there's going to be a little bit of wiggle room when you hit the bumper, right? And that's going to have a little bit of a random modifier on it as well. But I want this. I want this one to be, uh... Okay, hold on. I gotta get something out of the trash. I'll think about this one, but I want, like, the initial random thing and the regular other random things to be separate, right? So... So do these two, and then when I actually hit things, they'll have their own random modifiers. So how do I set these to be random range? Randomize. Okay, actually, I want to do random range. So I want to do random range between... Uh, Negative one. Wait. Yes, negative one and one. And same thing here. What's I random range? Alright, so you set those two equal to that, and this is. So for Y. So for your horizontal speed, you are going to have it set for. Uh, let's say let's say one, right? So it's going to be moving either. Actually, no, I don't want it to be a full random range because I want this to be a variable, don't I? Because it's either going to go one way or the other. There's no. There's no zero. I don't want a zero here. Okay, so how do I do... What's I random range? Uh, I'm going to integer values as the input. You supply the low value as well as the high value. Okay, how do I... How do I set it to a uh, game maker random only between two numbers?
Okay, so, but also I random is not what I want. But how do I... I guess what I would do is I random for horizontal initial. I would do I random range and set it between one and two. No, because that's... How do I how do I do 50-50? Okay, so game maker random two states. Does that work? Math random always gives you a value between zero and one. Not helpful. You know what? Let's just. I, w I just won't use this one for the moment. So we're always going to be moving to the right. Okay, and then. No, wait, this is set instance variable. I want get instance variable. No. No, that's not it either. Uh, it was set. It was set instant variable, and I want y coordinate. And I want this to be uh, one times y init rand. There we go. So on creation, the uh, the ball will now move left. Or it'll move to the right, and then it'll move at some ninety degree angle. Somewhere between like a 45 degree up and 45 degree down. That's what it's gonna do. So go back to the room here. Let's take the object ball. Sprite ball. Let's put the object ball right here. And try running. I don't have a camera set. Oh, also, actually, I forgot to capture that window. Let me just do that real quick. Okay, uh... So that's where block ball would be if it was working. Okay, so I've got to add a camera to this, I think. Actually, you know what? Let's follow. Let's follow the ball. Okay, so something's up there on the top left of the screen for half a second, which makes me think the camera's, like, over here.
Oh, what am I doing? I haven't... Okay, also, let me, uh, let me add a new layer here. Now that's tile layer. That's the one I want. This is layer, let's call this, uh, game. Let's put the ball in this one. Nope, I want ball there. This one, I can delete this extensive ball. There we go. So, camera, the camera is floating there, container, use, views, views what the camera sees, you port, area of the physical screen of the camera view will be displayed. Okay, so room editor, okay, room editor, open med, no, disperse, room editor, you go to room properties, you port to cameras. Enable viewports and clear background. Oh! There we go! So now, if I'm right, it should go off the screen to the right. Or not. So, anyway, the first thing to do here is... There we go. So now... Weird, why isn't this? Why isn't it going all the way down? question is why is it not seeing anything no object following let's try that okay still no Okay, so there's something else that's causing this to not, uh, show up on the screen. Okay, you know what? Let's 
Can I hide these for the moment? There we go. Thank God I can disable them like that. Okay, so that's not it. I don't know why it's going black like this. Okay, I'm gonna change the background here. Let's uh, change the color to something a little bit more uh, not black, like this. Okay, so it's not actually showing properly. That's what's going on. Something is happening here. ponder on this for a second. I'll be right back. I gotta get something out of the trash. Well, uh, I don't know what's causing it, so this seems like a good time to phone a friend. It's not a big deal, and it's just something I need to just mix around and then I'll fix it. So let's go back to doing some other work. So we're going to create a new object. We're going to call this object panel. A new sprite. A 
same deal as before. Let's uh, let's paint it red. That way you know it's the player. Or the other player. I wonder if there's a way to actually set the hue up by color. There should be, right? Anyway, this will be fine for the moment. Collision mask. Automatic. Good. So, create on creation. Uh, mouse and keyboard. should move it to the direction variable. Anyway, uh, I don't actually need to do anything on create, I don't think. So I'm going to add a new vent, and we're going to go on collision with the ball. And on... Actually, no, because this is being applied to the paddle in that case. Right? So actually, I don't want to do that. I believe I want to do it on the ball itself. So add event, collision with the paddle. So on collision with the paddle, I know how I do this if I was programming it, but how do I do it here? Ball speed, go to room, restart room, if room is first. So it would be... Uh, let's see, it would be... I would get the instance variable, and I would get the uh, horizontal speed. And let's say at uh, h speed. And then I would set instance variable horizontal speed is equal to negative 1 times h speed. Speed. All right, well, thanks for stopping by, Ludon. Yeah, I'm just, uh, I'm trying to make Pong, effectively. But it's not Pong, because Pong is trademarked. I'm making Block Ball. It's a game where you block the ball. All right, so this ideally should work. So what it should do here is, on impact with the paddle, it'll reverse the horizontal speed. So, actually, let's do this, and then plus one. So it'll actually speed up a little bit after impact. And by that, I mean... I can't actually calculate that out. Because if it's a negative, if it's negative velocity coming out of that equation, then I need to... Because if it's negative coming into that, that'll actually... I don't know, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna leave it like this for now. It's just gonna, it's just gonna do straight reversal, don't need to do anything else. All right, so add room in here. Let's throw in two paddles. Uh, cancel, put that on the game. Let's put that there. Let's reduce the size a little bit. And 
100. There we go. So it's 100 pixels away from the wall. Actually, let's make it 50. And whatever. I want to make it. There we go. Hey, even. Nice and even. Okay, so it's still going to be a black screen. Probably. Sure is. Okay. Uh, let's do another thing then. While well, I'm trying to figure that out. So, new event on... On collision with the wall. So, on collision with the wall, we are going to get... The current... Uh, vertical... Horizontal vertical speed. Call it uh, V speed. What was I calling it? H. Yeah, so V speed. Get the current vertical speed. Send instance variable as negative uh, one times the speed. That'll be a vertical speed output. There we go. So ideally now, if it hits this, it'll bounce off, change the vertical speed 100%, and if it hits here, it'll change the horizontal. So we'll get a nice little bounce going. Ideally. Now the problem is, I don't know why it's not giving me anything. I don't know why it's giving a black screen when I run. So let's see here. Uh, can make a Studio 2 black screen screen on. Okay, you know what? Let's try something else here. There's a comment here that somebody says something about the walls extending outside the room. So let's just zip those in a little bit. That. And does that fix it? No. No, it does not. Talking the background off in the editor, see if your game is behind it. Nope. That wouldn't work anyway because I would see gray if it was the case. Now, camera and viewport defined enabled in your room settings. Yeah, yeah, they are. Enable viewports. Just create order. No, that's just code when the room gets created. That's not what I want. possible oh that's why that's why 
because it was going to a different room. So I'm just gonna... How do I... Uh... There. So it was loading into this room instead. So now... Oh, you got something. That's something. So we've got a we got a room. We have a legitimate room here now. Why isn't the ball moving? Oh right, because I turned off the ball. I turned off the ball settings, didn't I? So let's turn that back on. Let's play that. Hmm. Why is it there? Oh god, why is it Y coordinate? That's what I wanted. How did I even do that? Okay, so now. Hey! Wait for it. Wait for it. Wait for it! Yeah! We're ponging, baby. Pongers. Alright, um... How do I reset the room whenever I want to? Uh, maybe I have to create a new object. Let's call it a control object or something. Okay, so add event. Um, key pressed. Let's call keypad letter R. So on letter R press. Actually, no, this is probably your be a room setting, right? Yeah, I'm just gonna get rid of that. So let's go back to the room. No, no, better idea. Better idea. Instead of doing that, an event on key press letter R. Press letter R. Uh, we're going to destroy this instance and spawn a new instance. Applies to self. Create instance. New instance. Object ball. There we go. So now, I don't have to worry about the ball not being destroyed. Oh, that's why. Okay. There's no instance. It would be game layer. So I just put it in the wrong place. I don't know why it's there. So let's try that now. Okay, so. Ball go that way. Up there. Wrong location. Um, how do I, what, what is this location here? Where is this thing? What is this thing's coordinates? How do I get the thing coordinates? Uh, 959, 531.
Okay, so now... We're balling. Wait for it. We're pawling. It's very slow though. Yeah, let's let's increase that speed a bit. Okay, uh so create on creation, we're gonna change this thing's speed to let's say ten and ten. So it's gonna move much faster now. That's true. What happens if it hits the side? Because I don't have that there. And again, ideally... What I'd be doing here is I'd be setting it up so that if the ball impacts on anything, it'll bounce off in the appropriate direction. So, for example, if I had a wall here, it would bounce off this way or this way instead of having to set up, like, just direct vertical and horizontal momentum, right? But hey, it works! Big step forward! We now have a functional prototype, let's say. Okay. Also, I did look it up. This is a um, random seed. Or rather, it's a seeded random value, so uh, that's why every time I start the room, it's always going to be... The bounces are going to go off the side like that, and then off the side, hit the bottom, and then straight like this. Then off the side, and then this one's probably going to go high, I think. Right, this one was next. Then that one goes high. So that's why it's doing that. Alright, um, well, we can do a couple things here. Let's go with, uh, negative five. Five. So a little bit less of a random angle from the start. Yeah, there we go. So it's more directly coming at the thing. Now that's what you like to see. Look at this control I have over it. <laughs> okay, so now what do I do? Um, next step is... Right, next up is uh, try and figure out how to do the horizontal speed swap. Uh, how would I do the speed swap? Because there's going to be a chance it's going to be a zero, and I don't want a zero. Well, let's try it out. Let's go with the uh, negative one, one. That's high random range. Times x and grand. Yeah, so there's a chance this is going to be a zero. Just like that. Just like that.
That one... Oh, God, that's terrible. <laughs> okay, um... What I would do here is a wow loop, I guess. So can I do that? Yeah, there we go. So variable uh, is equal to zero. So I would do um, x init brand. No, because that's going to increment on itself. Which actually, come to think of it. So let's do this. Wait, so how's the, what's the loop actually look like? Well, x and it rand is equal to zero, which if it becomes zero, if it becomes zero, it'll go into here where it'll become knit rand plus. that. Does that work? Mm, no way, I think this is like a weight effectively. That was a wow. The while statement. Uh, as long as the expression is true, the statement is executed. Therefore, we'll allow us to easily make infinite loops or we'll hang. Okay. So that's. I don't want this then. So I probably want to just use an if. Honestly, I'd want to flow back. I wanted to do here. Yeah, I want to go here, and then if true, if it's not zero, then it goes here. But if it is zero, it re loops back around to here. So if actually, I think that's exactly how it works. I'm just kind of because this drag and drop stuff is like there's the specific things you can do with it, right? So if uh, x init rand not equal to zero, then it goes here. And if it is equal to zero, then no. I want I want to loop back around. Can I, can I do that? Okay, I see now, actually. So what I would do is actually I would get rid of this assigned variable. But I'd still need to... I'd still need to start the variable up. So this doesn't really... Hold on a moment.
Okay, uh... So global variable, that's not what I want. Sign a variable, maybe? Okay, I've already done that. So that means that's now there. do effect. I guess it would have to be a while loop. Yeah, like this, right? So that's what it would do. Okay, this is what I have to do. Okay, got it, got it, got it, got it. So I don't need this. D. So while x init rand is equal to zero, then you assign the variable here, and it would be x rand. There we go. So effectively, that's going to while loop until it hits not zero for the value, which will be either one or negative one. Then it'll move on with the calculations. That should work. Let's try it out. Yep, there we go. Look at this. Okay. So, that's that. Excellent. Very good. Wonderful. Now, we got some other stuff to do here. Specifically this part. So what I want to get is... Reverse direction from a list of presets. Oh, that's convenient. I don't want to set point direction. I want to get point direction. And that's... Not what I need either. Gravity, jump to points of speed, set point direction, get direction, set direction, collision. Into one more in shape. Set tile at index at pixel. Uh, this is Game Maker Studio 2. So this is just me making a game. Check it, I got a game now. Doesn't work very much, but it works, kind of. Look at that, it's got collisions on the paddles. No, 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 it's not Pong, it's Block Ball. Pong is trademarked, can't use that, but it's Block Ball. Need to fix that though. Pong Champ. And also, I'm just listening to some uh, royalty free chip tunes in the background. Yeah, I'm just getting there. I started an hour ago. I think I got good progress. How do I... 
Oh. Ooh, that's right. Uh, gotta do this, too. Get audio pitch, city on audio volume, pause audio, stop. Play audio. Target uh, sound. I don't know what I said was the target here. All right, so sound effects. Select an asset. Do I have any? No. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna have to insert some. Um, I create. No. Do I have any sound effects I can use for this? I do. Uh, where would I put this? Let's put this. Can I import that? There we go. All right. So this is going to be my uh, pong paddle noise for the moment. Hey, listen. Compressed, not streamed. All right, where do these things go? Sounds. Okay, so what I do here is the paddle, the ball. ball. Paddle on contact is going to play that sound. Similarly, on contact with the wall, we are going to play that sound. This is going to be really annoying in a minute. Hey, listen. <laughs> hey, listen. Hey, listen. Okay, hold on. Hey, listen. What's hey, going to happen here? Listen. Hey. <laughs> I knew that was going to happen. I knew that was going to happen, but I still wanted to see. Okay, so what i got to do now is I've got to get that uh, omnidirectional rebound working. Oh, I can set instance color. Oh! I probably should do that too. So let's create a new object before I forget. Let's, let's use this one. Let's rename it. Object uh, scorer. This is going to be invisible, so I don't need a sprite for it. Wrong room. A second, I'll be right back.
Okay, um, right, I was fixing the walls up, is what I was doing. There we go, so that gives me a little bit of room, and we're going to throw in some object scorers here. I guess it doesn't work without a sprite? Because what I basically want to do is just have a, um... Right, because it's going to be a collision object, so it doesn't work. Let's edit the image, and we'll cut... I'm just going to have, like, a black outline on this. There we go. Let's call it uh, Sprite. Collision mask, automatic, rectangular. Cool. So that's the scorer thing, and now it has an object and a thing here. Uh, I didn't want anything to do with that. So add event, let's add collision object. No, no, wrong. Didn't want the paddle. I wanted collision with the ball. So when it collides with the ball, uh, destroy an instance applies to the other, which means it'll destroy the ball. Uh, create new instance of a ball at uh, whatever the location was. 959.531. Whoops. How did that? going to be in the game layer. So that new object will be created like that. It could be instance. And also... Um, I've got to set up a new... Uh, this is why you have why you have an object for scorekeeping and UI, I think. Anyway, let's, let's leave that for now. So what I'm going to do is I'm then going to, let's make a new layer here. We're going to call this, actually this will be a background, no, tile, path, asset, fact, folder, delete layer. So we're going to call this uh, UI. This will be the last thing to get drawn, and we're just going to have uh, to create an uh, object. This is object UI. This one actually doesn't need one. So on creation, it's going to create a uh, text. Draw text, and we're going to call that uh, draw caption. And let's just try that. Let's try this for now. Let's just try doing this. So put that in here. I guess it doesn't really matter where it goes. And then we have the game. Uh, 
go. Save that and run it. And now we should have text in the top left corner. Which we don't. Isn't this drawing the text? So on creation, draw. Oh, because I don't have a value, so. Value. What is caption? Oh, I thought the music was breaking or something for a second there, but no, it's just built in slowdown for what's actually happening. Uh. Oh! Of course, right. It's not a string. There we go. And top left, we should see value. No, no we don't. Okay. Uh, how about we move it to the center? Let's go 900, 500. Nothing. Uh, wait, wait, this is drawing. Ah, oh, that's why. How do I set a font? How, how do I actually set a font in Game Maker? Uh, uh, right click on Asset Browser and select and create font. Ah, that works. Call it, uh, make it easier. Uh, that's Arial. Ah, so this is why you'd be able to, like, have different fonts show up for different things. Because you could set an individual font per, uh, object. Let's see. Font to Arial. And then draw the value. It says value. Still not Nothing's breaking, so that's good. Look at that game run. Look at this game run.
All right, so now that that's... Let, let's leave that for the time being. So what I want to do here is some move some things here. Oh, I can actually change the variable definitions there. That's handy. Okay. So I could do that there instead of doing it here, which actually makes more sense. Anyway, uh, I'm going to the sprite here. I want to muck around, muck around with the sprites for a minute. Collision mask. Automatic. Rectangle. Okay, I see. Origin. I want this to be middle center. So, sprite paddle, same deal. Oh, middle center. And the wall will also be middle center. I see. So it has to be in the draw gui part of it. Can I actually just copy this? Yeah, there we go. Now, if that works, hey, look at that. what the fuck happened. Hey, listen. Hey, listen. Hey, listen. Oh, I see what happened. It's because I changed how the, uh, I see. There we go. Let's move these out of the way for the time being. There we go, that's in the center. Seven fifty. There we go. There we go. Fixed. Okay, so that's going to be able to draw there. So I want to go back here. So draw the caption. So let's call this uh, P1. The value there is going to be a score value that I'll determine later. Uh, I also want to draw a second one here, which is going to be P2. And that'll be a score value that I'll determine later. Which is probably going to have to be a global variable. Ok. 
Okay, so score. Score, uh, create instance of another ball right in the center. And we are going to I guess the easiest way to do this would probably be to set like a, a scorer and then have each instance of the scorer be assigned to a player. No, 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 no. What you would do is on collision. On collision with the paddle, the object that the ball is, we instead get a variable change to indicate what the last one touching it was. Because that way, even if there's multiple players, you don't have all of the objects interacting and giving scores to the wrong place. That makes sense. So let's go with object paddle, uh, play the audio, and then... And then I don't know how you do this. I guess each instance would have to be. This would be something if I actually had multiplayer going on. I would have the object, the paddles act with different values. They would have different players controlling them, which means there would be different instances. So I could have each instance assigned to player one, two, whatever, and then have that go. So uh, in this instance, then I guess I would just have. Uh, I'd have to create a variable creation let's assign another variable here and call that let's assign a variable assign a variable object uh, no what am I doing assign a variable let's put that right there and call the variable uh, last hit and that would just be a uh, That'll be a variable that just says, like, this is the last player that hit it. And it'll get that value from whatever was the last thing that hit it. So on collision, with the paddle, we're going to set the value of... Last hit gets changed to whatever the variable is here. So let's get to one. So it would get a variable based on that. All right, P1. Let's change that a little bit too. About P1 and P2. How do I change the Set the font. I guess it would be drawing. Uh, draw self draw value, transform value. It's not what I want at all. Ooh, actually, I go here, don't I? Hinting, glyph, no. I'm gonna change the color of this. Draw set color white. RGB, no. These are all...
Ah, there it is. So set draw color. We're going to make this a nice blue or something. Dark blue. And there it is, dark blue, and P1 is probably underneath that object. Hard to see. I think it's there, though. So we're going to move these. And we're actually going to change this one to draw. Yeah, we're going to do this. So I'm going to do this. 100, 500, and we're going to scale this up 10. Similarly. Let's go with uh, 1,600. So now we should have both of them in the center, nice and big. Boy, that's, yeah, that's too big, probably. Okay, so where do I want them? Maybe like, uh, 100 and 20. Actually, no, this would be like, So now we should have them up in the corners. Hey, listen. I mean, that, that's a little bit too big, honestly. So let's scale those down to five. Wish it was a bit easier to do this. Um, let's make it uh, 20 off of the sides. Or, yeah, 20 off of the sides. So this will be 20. And then this one will be 1900. Hey, okay, that's hey. nowhere near far enough away. So let's make it 100 off of the sides. Actually, that's still not going to be enough. I'll probably have to move it to like 15. Yeah, no, that's... Okay, hold on a second. This one I actually know. Because I saw it's like, hey, who would use that? But no, now I understand. Um, get text alignment. Get the horizontal work alignment text drawing set. So, center and vertical alignment top. That seems good. Okay, so now let's, yeah, let's move it like, let's move it 500 over. Yeah, that looks better. Hey, listen. I can also move that back hey, up a wee listen. bit. Let's get a little bit of a, a little bit of leeway there. Let's make this three. Hey, look at that! We got UI. We got UI now. Yeah, baby. Hey. Move those over a little bit more. Well, looks good. All right, so now just one last thing here. Draw transform value. Let's call this block ball. Let's make this five scale, because why not? Uh, Y5, and then halfway in between these two. Let's 
It's 1920 divided by 2, anyway. 960. Perfect. It's beautiful. Gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. Beautiful. Hey, Just perfect. You've never seen anything as beautiful as this, have you? It's moving up very slowly but surely it's moving hey there we go okay I just had a thought. I just had a thought. I just had a thought. So going here, right? Uh, this is the initial random value, blah, blah, blah. This is when it's created. Let's move this up here. And then we're going to do an if right here. That's the one I wanted, not if, if expression. I want if variable. So if, if uh, last hit is equal to zero, which means that there hasn't been a ball yet, It'll go this direction. But if there has been a ball yet, the last is equal to zero. But if there has been a ball, then set the instance. Set instance variable. Nope, that's not the one. I want it over here. Horizontal speed. So this is, uh, if there was no last hit. Okay, is it? Oh, no, wait, it's actually backwards. If last hit is not equal to zero, then set the instance horizontal speed equal to a value, which would actually be getting a point Okay, how do I get... 
of collision shape. No, what, what's the... I don't want set point direction. I want get point direction. I don't want set point direction. I want get direction to point. Set direction fixed. How do I do that? I think I can close the, uh, this, this part, though. I don't need that anymore. That's drawing the text. That'll be useful later. Okay, yeah, right. So on create instance, you're going to get a... Well, no. Mm. Okay, add, let's add an event here. Let's do key down. No, wait, this is a, uh, this would be step events, right? So on each step, uh, if, first keyboard, check if a key is pressed. Let's make this uh, down. So if key pressed, then you'd be uh, change instance to be that another object. Change now, I want movement. down. So on creation, actually, let me see if I can, I should probably set this thing's uh, speed of an instance, type direction, and set that to, let's make this seven. So it's not, yeah, it's not going to be as fast as the ball. Step, key pressed, VK down, and uh, step if keyboard down, that does that, and if keyboard up, no, I don't want it to be subordinate to that one, S keyboard up, then up. All right, so let's do this. Hey, listen. Hey, listen. All right, well, it's working. Hey, listen. Hey, Although it's listen. setting a... Okay, so it's not set direction that I want. I want it to only move while it's being pressed. Oh. 
Oh, I also need to do this. I forgot. So instances. Set sprite instance this. Instance count call user event stripe position. Uh, Countdown. Set instance scale color. Set. Wrap around room. It's direction fixed. Uh, how do I? Ah, jump to specify position. But this is being applied to ah. Okay, there we go. Object paddle. No, I don't want to apply to object paddle every paddle. I want to apply to specific. No, this doesn't work. That's only going to work on collision there, but how would I. So what I'd want here is actually on the ball destruction instance, or when the ball is destroyed, it also jumps the paddles back to the center of the playing field, which I can do without for the moment, but... Also, why did the... Why did these things have an initial velocity? Oh. Oh, that's why. But if I do this... They're not going to move because they don't have a velocity. Hey, listen. I guess what I would do is... I guess I would assign two variables here. This, this feels like it's horribly inefficient, but I would assign... I don't even need to move it, really. So let's do uh, paddle speed. Set that to seven. So that would just be assigned here on creation. And then on the step value... Uh... If key is pressed down, wait, I wanted that. Okay, so if key is pressed down, then. Okay, no, it's it's this one. This is the one I actually want. So if the key is down, if uh down is down, then set direction down. That's not it either.
Okay, so that actually explains that one. Um, how do I move the gun? See, so assign but right now set instance variable. Right, that makes sense. So this would be this wouldn't be setting the speed, this would be setting the coordinate, which would be the y coordinate relative to uh Negative one times paddle, paddle speed. There we go. And then if key down, key down up, then set instance variable y coordinate relative paddle speed. So now if I push down and up, It's reversed for some reason because I guess that's how Game Maker does its coordinates. So this will be paddle speed. This will be negative one and times paddle speed. Or can I just do negative paddle speed? Does that work? It does. Look at this! And then, of course, if it hits there, it destroys the instance. Listen. Okay, cool. Now going here real quick. We have two instances of this. And I can change this and... I see. So variable, I could change the variable here to be... Uh, the previous player would be player 1. This would be player 1, let's say, or player 2. That'd be player one. So let's uh, let's do that then. So let's go back to here real quick. So I don't have to do this individually over time. Variable definitions, add a new variable, and we're gonna call this play number. Defaults to zero. This is going to be an integer. There we go. So now when I go to the ball, on collision with a paddle on collision with a paddle sign variable last hit is equal to other dot player number or player num rather yeah so we go here back to this the game this one uh, variable, this is going to be, edit this one, this is going to be number two. Uh, variable, this is going to be number one. Okay. So, now that's set. When we go back to the ball, the ball will now have a value that assigns itself where it gets the player number from the other instance and assigns it to itself. We'll deal with the thing where when it spawns, it's supposed to 
get a point. Hello, Phil. How are you doing? Uh, did the playlist end? What's going on with my music? Why'd that stop? There we go. Alright, um, so this is going to be, instead of setting an instance variable, we're actually going to set this to be a, where is it, point direction. And that's going to point to, ideally, our last hit paddle and move it in the opposite direction. Ideally. Um, although really I only need that for the X direction, so the Y direction can be... Uh, there. So I'll just do this for the time being. So every time it hits... See, last hit is now going to be changed up on impact when it spawns in. So that'll do that. Let's check this out. So I just need one impact. Hey, listen, hey, listen. Hey, listen. So now it should always go to the left. Yep. Hey, listen. No, it's not. Hey. So apparently I can save the idea of the other thing, which is good. So let's go with um So the client paddle equals other ID, so that'll be on collision with the paddle. Other dot ID. Yeah, so that'll get the ID value of the paddle that I hit. Theoretically. So, uh, last hit is now a value with the ID of the other paddle, which is, I guess, this nonsense. So, on creation, instance variable, if the variable last hit is not equal to zero, which it won't be, I get a set a point direction where I go uh, collided path. so there'll be last hit dot the last hit dot x and the y value is randomized because that's fine.
try that. So ideally, let's see, that's gonna go left, right, left, left, right. So it should go right, left, left, right. So this should go right now if I've got this right. No, it didn't. Yeah, no, it's not working. Okay, so on collision with a paddle, sign variable. Oh, also, uh, right, forgot to change this around. Set point direction, uh, other.x. Other dot X and other dot Y. Just do that. Is that the one? No, because that's going to be. No, this should be fine, actually. So let's see if this works. Okay, so that one's always going to push into there, which is a bit of a problem. It works fine on this one. Okay, let me see if I can... actually fine on the top of that one, but it's not fine on the bottom of that one. Because of how the coordinates are lined up. Okay, no, it's fine on the top for both of them, but it's not fine on the bottom. I see. If I do relative, would that fix it? What would relative do?
Okay, I want to make sure it always goes away from here when it's going. Nope, it's not. Very clearly not. No, it's very clearly not doing that. Also, it's not bouncing correct. You don't need to adjust the Y value at all, do I? Do I? Okay, so this no longer will change the X value, but it will change, it won't change the Y value, but it will change the X value. Okay, clearly not. Why is it bouncing up? Hey, it's always bouncing up. Which is strange. I don't know why it's bouncing up.
Okay, there's also something I'm gonna do here. Let's see, is this in here? No. Uh, X, no. Position? Might be used to set a collision with the wall. So that when it hits the wall, it just stops moving. See if that works. Hey, look at that! Can't exit the room anymore. Okay, so that's clearly not working. For whatever reason, it's not getting the correct X value out of whatever I'm doing. Whenever I hit the wall, whenever I hit the ball. Last hit is the other ID. Set point direction. Oh, you know what it is? Hmm, what is the ID number going to print out as, actually? Let's hold off on that for a second. I am going to... Where's that? There it is. I'm just going to get a new thing in here. Let's just try a new one, and it's going to be uh, ID... So now that should show me what the last contact point was whenever... One zero zero three. One zero zero two. So that's a, it's a numerical value. 
Okay, that's fine. I think that's the problem. It wasn't persisting. So, remove that. Don't need to do that anymore. So now, ideally, hey, it'll listen. point to the left now. And it's always going to go to the left, which it didn't do. It's not a global variable. It's not a global variable. That's why. Okay, so let's... Go here, and let's just create a global variable while I'm at this. Uh, so here, set global variable, and we're gonna call this last hit. That's on creation, so we'll do that. So now, No, because I'm also not pointing at a... I'm also not pointing at a thing. Something's not working for me right, right there. Okay, that's that's why it's it's pointing currently it's just gonna give me a thing, but it's not gonna point to the ID I need. And it's also resetting on Actually, wait, can I still like can I change the variable around? These range, min, no, that's not what I need.
Okay, I'm not gonna bother making a global last hit object then. I think this is gonna cause me more headache than it's worth. So what it should be doing in that case... What it should be doing in that case is I should be able to increment the score up based on the last hit. The last hit value should be useful for this, because I can use that to tell who got this point, right? But how do I increment the score up using that? Because I need to point to... I need to create two players, and then... Hmm. I don't know, I've got a couple issues. The big issue right now is the bouncing isn't working anymore. Which is this problem right here. No, this, this one's fine, actually. It's this problem right here that's causing me grief. Zero change in the X direction would be good. That should change it so that the uh, Y doesn't, Y won't change if I do this. That's not at all what I wanted, actually. Yeah, it's completely negating the Y. So it sh it's, it's not doing that, it should be. Okay, relative. So let's do self. Dot, uh, the speed. Maybe that one works. I'd just like to get this collision thing fixed, and I can do scores another time or whatever. Hey, okay, no, that's clearly not it. Hey, hey, yeah, that's definitely not listen. it. Okay, that's like, that's inverting it, which is not what I want. Okay, it's always going up. Like, that one bounces up, which is a problem. It shouldn't be doing that. that do. Yeah, it's affected. Yeah, OK. 
Okay, so that's not what I want to do at all. Oh, wait, is it just... Oh, God, am I stupid? I might be stupid. I might be real stupid. Okay. Okay, that's not it. That also is not it. Check the paddle object again. Maybe the paddle object I didn't. Okay, I was in a call, so I got the assistance, which was just, I needed to add the rotation to it to get to work. So that does the trick. There we go, got a working palm.
So apparently the reason why it wasn't working is because when I was trying to do the negative point thing, it was actually moving it to like a global negative point or something, which isn't what you want to do. Okay, so that that's what that's supposed to do. Set direction variable negative 180. Cool. Problem solved. So that takes care of that nonsense. So is there a notepad thing I can make here? Like just this to-do list? Tools. No, my place layout help. Release notes. No. Is that let me is there like a hold on. Let's do two notepad. It doesn't look like there's one, so I'll make one. Okay, so let's add a new thing here. Oh, no. There we go. Hey, there we go. Let's, uh, rename. Call it, uh... Things to... Let's call it the to-do. There we go. I don't need to... I don't need to make it fancy. All right, so first, um, uh, let's see here. Collisions have now been fixed, so actually I can change the collisions on the walls too. Now that I have that. No, wait, do I want to do that? Ideally, that's all I'd want to do, because that way it's just very simple vertical speed gets inverted when you hit a wall. But if I want to do fancier stuff, then I need to figure out how to do things better. What it's basically doing right now is it's getting a vector that points to the center of the object that I'm looking at and then reverses it. Like, I'm getting a vector pointing at the object in the center and then inverting that, but I don't want to do that for both variables, so I guess I could just... This would be like... A... I mean, I'm going to have to do manual shit anyway at this point. Because what I'd have to do is, like... I'd have to, like... Okay, so what I'd have to do for that, in that case, would be I'd have to, like, do walls, create variables for each wall instance, which specifies, like, a normal direction. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, so I'd have to kick it. How do I even do that? How do I do that? What I need to do, like, hold on, let me, let me get a paint image here. I'll just get this captured too, real quick. Okay, so here, what I'd have to do effectively is I would have to... So, normally what happens when you have the wall, you have the wall, ball comes in, bounces, you invert the Y. I'm just gonna make that Y is that direction. What am I doing? There you go, Y is down, right? It'll just invert the Y and you'll just bounce off like this, right? There's Y. But now what happens if... What happens if you have a wall at an angle like this? If it bounces into here, or let's say if it bounces into it at this angle, if I just invert the Y, it's going to continue off in this direction and just bounce down. It's kind of like slide along the wall effectively, like this, until it comes off the edge and just goes down and then however, whatever direction it was, right. That's not what I want at all. What I'd want is it to bounce off like this, which would calculate based on an angle of incidence, based on a normal vector coming out from the center pointing this direction. The problem then is that I need to do vector-based calculations to figure out what part here is being transferred over to what part there based on the instant angle and the vector angle. Uh, the angle reflection, effectively. Like, the math is easier to work with if you have just a regular rectangle because it's just, here's your center point, Here's your normal. Thing comes in here, thing goes out there. You just invert, there's no X component here to speak of. X gets no adjustment, so you just do this and that just calculates out the uh, inversion of the uh, Y axis. So I guess in that case, if we were doing something like, horizontal, you do the exact same thing. Just the vector on the x-axis, which is just doing that. Oh, of course, what am I doing? It would just be a, it would be a total of one. So this is always going to be one, or rather negative one, because you're inverting it. So what you would do is, if it was in this case, it'd be here. This has a length of one. Then you'd have to do right angles, because that's the hypotenuse, so this would be... So this is one here. If I gotta, if I gotta think coming in at this angle, I gotta do one there, which means you have to calculate out... You could probably get the angle of incidence here. Alright, let's see. This is always gonna be 90. Calculate this, these angles, which then you can use to calculate out these two sides. Those are going to be...
I'll have to work out the exact math for this later on, but the basically is basically is you'd have to do a little bit of trig calculation in order to get this thing to run at odd angles. Which is not the hard part for me. The hard part is The hard part is getting this part, the normal vector, coming out of the center of the block and applying it across at every point on this thing. Because if it's in the center, that's fine, because I don't have to worry about it, but if it's at another point, I need to somehow get the game to always say, this is the angle to calculate off of. So that's something I'll have to figure out. Just change my game capture hey, back there. Listen, hey, listen, hey, oh, hey, look at this. We got Pong, hey, sort of. Okay, so things I need listen, to fix are scoring. Listen. Yeah, so I need to fix scoring. So, uh, to do. So, what? So one, scoring, uh, use uh, last hit ID value to determine previous contact paddle. Oh, right, uh, direction. Spawn, ball, spawn, direction. Use last Hit ID value to determine uh, initial x velocity. Move away from last scorer. Um, so that's scoring, that's ball spawn direction, and a uh, wall. This is going to be a multi-part thing. So wall collisions. Uh, we want figure out normal vector. Oh. Figure out how to calculate normal vector for wall slash other objects. So collision math can be performed. Uh, work out the correct triangle math for the uh, for the velocity adjustments and. Got the correct triangle math, and then there was another part, right? Actually, no, so here's would be even simpler, because I don't even need to deal with that. Like, this is a specific problem for geometric shapes with sides. If it's a sphere object, then I just have the vector pointing to the center, and that deals with it no matter what. is the last bit here. I know there's one more thing.
I feel like I'm forgetting something here, but I don't remember what. Mark out the correct triangle math for the velocity adjustments. How would I do that? Well, there's another there was another one and I don't remember what it was So I need to increase the velocity per hit. If I figured out that thing, I should probably... If I figure out that thing, I should probably also apply it to the paddles because that would uh, be useful. <laughs> Probably everything, but that's everything that's really in my mind at the moment. Let me see here. So we got the score object. That is the score object. Right. So what I should probably do actually is uh, get... Value an instance variable, and uh, no, this is a different thing. Yeah, no, I want. If I turn into a global variable, I could get the global variable and then just pop that into the scoreboard. But I don't know how the score would increment with that. I don't know. Things to work on. So that's... That's everything I got for now, I think. Uh, these two are probably going to be easy enough to do. This is going to take a bit, I think. That's where I'm going to leave that for now. So, I'll be back with this next week, I think. I want to just... It's something I've been meaning to do, like I said. And I want to just use this to keep myself honest. So I can actually start doing it. And hey, like, thanks to GameMaker for being so easy to use. 
with the drag and drop stuff. I can liter I literally put together a semi-functional game of Pong in three hours from scratch. All right. I literally just broke it. Forgot I did that. Okay, uh, let's just disable that for the time being. There we go. Block ball. Anyway, so I'm gonna leave that there for now. Uh, do I have three executable? Hey, cool. That's right. I did get the PC release, the PC export thing for this. Which so let me go to yeah, real quick. Um. to my creator page. No, dashboard. There it is, block ball. All right, so I have created a uh, HIO page for this, and I'll just actually upload the first build on here, because why not? It's pseudo-functional. So, I don't know. I'm, I'm not going to upload it just yet, because I don't want to, like, upload something that's not working right. So I'll do stuff a little bit more once I actually have, like, things to work with, but it's there. The game does actually exist on Steam. Is this a draft? Okay, yeah, I did keep it as a draft. I did, in fact, keep it as a draft for... Now. Yeah. Uh, you know what? Let's go in here real quick. Let's go in the draft. Okay, so let's see here. Build, create executable, packages installer. Desktop just to make it easy. Block ball. There we go. Blockball.exe. Let's install it. Let's make a desktop shortcut. It's being called Create with okay. Start create with Game Maker Studio Two. Hey, look! There we go. There we go. Actually, you know what? I'm not gonna upload this yet because I don't have a sound effect for the contact that isn't listen. Navi right now, listen. and I don't want to upload something listen. that is literally. Uh, owned by Nintendo. So, I will not do that yet. Shit, that installed, didn't it? Can I, can I get rid of that on my computer? Yeah, it literally installed on my computer. I don't want to do that. have that installed. How do I... I think packaging as a zip doesn't do that.
Yeah, if I open it as a zip, it just has an EXE here, and it looks like that... It's on my desktop. Yeah, there we go. That one just runs by itself without having to install. That's what I'll do. Alright, so that's what I'm going to do. I will get another sound effect in there and upload this as like version 0 0.01 or something onto the itch.io page and people can download that if they want. Uh, I did set it to be like donate or free, but you can just download it for free because it's got not much to go in there. And, uh, th like I said, this stream is basically just to keep me honest. It's designed to make it so I will make this thing slowly and surely over the course of weeks and months, but I will make this. It's like, that's the idea here. That's what this is for. So, I'll deal with that later. Actually, I think I'll probably just get rid of the pricing because this is not worth any amount of money. This is not worth the money. This sounds like a Pokemon theme. Anyway, yeah. So, that's where I'm going to leave that for today, though. As always, thanks for stopping by. Thanks for checking out the game creation process with me, I guess. I'll fiddle around with this, see what else I can do. I've got my to-do list of things to fix up and things to add, and we'll be see how it goes. Sounds good. All right. Uh, tomorrow is Pathfinder, because it's Sunday. Uh, might have to cancel that one, though, depending. The schedules might be getting interfered with. We'll see. Anyway, that'll be tomorrow. Next week, I'll continue on with this. Might have some changes made, might not. We'll see. But yeah, thanks for stopping by. Enjoy the rest of your day. See you next time. Oh, and again, thanks to, uh, where is it? Once again, thank you to Stream Beats for supplying the music. This is the Chiptune album that's available on Spotify. And I wonder if it's available anywhere else. Let me check. Uh, it says Ample Music. Do I have to pay for it on Apple? Looks like I can just listen to it. And if I go to Amazon, Amazon Music is just available on Amazon Music too. So thank you again for that. I'll see you next time.